Joseph Wayne McVeigh IV, aka Zero, born January 19th, 1977. Today's feature is one of those rappers whose resume you look at, whose work ethic you notice, and whose longevity that's apparent, and you're confused as to why that didn't all amount to more success and a bigger platform in the music industry. Zero is a rapper 47 years old now who's recently released his 26th album. He's been in the game since 17 years old and released his first album in 1998 when he was 20, 21. He's done music with many mainstream artists and even has a song with Shaquille O'Neal that's done millions of views, similar to the multiple songs and official videos released by Zero that's done the same numbers. Yet, if you asked a general rap or hip-hop fan a question involving Zero, it wouldn't be a surprise if they don't have a clue who you're talking about, especially today. With more than 25 years in the game, and more than that in studio albums, one thing's for sure is notoriety or lack thereof isn't something Zero plans to let stop him from grinding and using his first love to provide for the six daughters he has and not going back to the hood environment he grew up in that keeps people that look like him trapped there for what could be forever. In an interview with Microphone Checks, Franny and Ali, he mentions that trap, speaking on how tough it is to simply leave your house unattended in certain parts of the area he's from for even an hour without having someone either run in it and steal everything but the house or shoot out your windows and doors, even flatten your car tires, all because maybe you've allowed them to see all the nice material things that you possess that because of their own inability to hustle and grind, they can't get for themselves. Because of this, as a young rapper, it was difficult to get up, go out there and chase your dreams when by the time you return home, there's nothing but the walls and the carpet you left of your possessions. Maybe being stuck in that environment and having to protect the things you've earned through blood, sweat and tears has kept Zero as mainly an underground artist that is mostly known and popular in places like Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana or Mississippi and the further away you go, his name fades more and more in the background of what's popular. He's never had a platinum studio album and his fans don't expect him to drop the next chart-topping song on Billboard, but they do support his music almost cult-like and at the very least understands and appreciates an artist like Zero for keeping it real about his experiences and never giving them shorts as far as quantity. Yet and still, for these reasons, he never blew up mainstream or became a household name outside his target audience. Why is that? Let's talk about it. Salute to 912 Signature and Wizzle713 for this request. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Zero is a rapper, singer, songwriter, and record producer from Houston, Texas, but moved to the Missouri City area, Ridgemont to be exact, in the Southwest Houston area around six years old after his mother passed away. As he would tell you himself, in Houston, since he was a child, it seemed like everyone was rapping or trying to use rap to get out the hood. He describes his environment as full of hate and envy for the next man that may have more. It's highly competitive, which gave Zero the understanding that time is of the essence and if he was going to join the saturated market of rappers, he had to put in the time to at least try to be one of the best. Mix that with looking over his shoulders while he sold drugs on the streets just to earn enough to get by, and you understand why he appreciates every little bit of support he gets for his music. He signed multiple local record deals from 98 to 2004 and then Rap-A-Lot took notice and signed him to their label in joint with Asylum Records. He'd stay there for the next 10 years before he branched out to do his own thing and enjoy the profits of being independent even though it does have its downsides. Stun number 1. Not every rapper is mainstream. I think it's important right out the gate to acknowledge the fact that every rapper that picks up a mic isn't going to become a household name. Even so, you can still have a successful career that pays nicely and gives you a consistent core fan base without ever being on the top of the charts and an artist like Zero is living proof. Like mentioned, he's never had a platinum album in his over 25 year career 
Yet, compared to the normal workforce, he's able to enjoy a lifestyle he can support six daughters and have neighbors that make tea and crumpets from scratch. As music has grown over the years to now where as a rapper you have much more streams of income within music, the fame and notoriety only means a bigger piece of the same cake and most certainly isn't at all necessary. Since day one, I think Zero fell into the lane of a rapper that's never going to be front and center among his peers because front and center isn't his personality or music he makes. He isn't a rapper being the loudest in the room or making the blog sites on a weekly basis for something outlandish he just did that caused controversy and got him picked up by TMZ news cycles. He's not a soldier boy, for example, who lives off controversy and constantly screaming at his phone for his voice to be heard. Not that anything's wrong with that because that's the artist soldier boy is. Zero is not that guy. He's understood for a while now that his goals aren't centered around the awards and recognition he gets in rap music, but to make the best music that helps him express himself and makes enough to hold him over until next time. His personality leads his persona in music, and that personality has always been one not naturally built to be enjoyed on a mass level. Yes, it caused him to fly under the radar, but his fans, the core that understands that, supports him every time he releases music and has been for over 25 years now that he doesn't have to chase mainstream. Stun number two, in the wrong era. Now don't get me wrong, you don't have to be a loud, boastful rapper to be a mainstream rapper at all. Once you understand what the fans want and have the talent to provide that, you can have a calm personality and achieve mainstream success. Take Kendrick Lamar for example. Same low-key demeanor, but everything he drops hits the charts and his tours all sell out whenever he does music. One reason is because Kendrick didn't miss the window of the era his music would be most popular. Now from here, it's easy to feed the fans what you already understand they'll want. J. Cole, same thing. Zero, in my opinion, should have blew up during the 2000s when the South, specifically Houston, had the game on lock. When artists like Slim Thug, Paul Wall, Lil Flip, and who? Mike Jones were the biggest things in rap. Even listening to his music today, it's not the popular sound and his flow isn't aggressive, singing about violence and gang gang this, gang gang that. His tongue twister flow, the sound of his voice, beats he chooses, even song or album art seems to fit into the 2000s era much better. Problem with that is, as those guys mentioned were blowing up and constantly in the face of 106 in Park. Rap City, MTV, and dropping half a million dollar videos paid for by some mainstream label, Zero was just doing what he could and focusing on feeding his core fans based on what he was being fed from the label. He said himself that sometimes he'd give D, E, and F effort if that's what the label was paying him. If the money was A1, he'd give A, B, or C effort instead, and I disagree with going about it that way. You have to always give 100% effort or it can cause you to miss opportunities and a window you can't get back. Michael Jordan said that every game he played like his last because he never knew if there was someone in the stands that's never seen him play. Same with music. These things closed an arrow on Zero's music and kept him underground. Stun number three, the Trey the Truth situation. I got in a fight. Do you know the people? Oh, of course I know. Yes, trade the truth. For new fans getting into Zero, all they have to go off visually is what's happening now, not the respect he's gained from his early 2000s days. In 2022, he and rapper Trey the Truth got into an altercation that ended with Zero in a fetal position after being dropped by someone in Trey's camp. According to Trey, he and Zero has had issues for 10 to 15 years and just had to handle some family business but to whose expense. For a street rapper, Zero's image took a hit with rap fans of today, where they have access to seeing you anytime you step outside due to camera phones and people willing to pull them out at your lowest points. In this day and age where you can't lose a fight or they'll think you're soft, Zero being beat up, whether he was sucker punched or not, affected him in the same way it did Freddie Gibbs. 
He also went on the news and mentioned who was behind the beatdown, which didn't sit well with some fans who say that was a form of snitching or at the very least offering up information. Trey The Truth was actually charged for that incident, not sure if by Zero or not, so anything said by Zero could have hurt Trey in court. Charges were dismissed and Trey and Zero talked it out, but even so, for Zero fans, seeing him knocked out was hard. For new fans, it definitely didn't add to his core. All in all, Zero is a rapper that's just fine in his own lane even though it isn't mainstream. He's done what he loves for over 25 years and is getting paid to do it. Not many people in general can say that, but musically, for these reasons, he didn't become mainstream and his growth was stunning. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth Music, and I'm out.